Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again today. I am Trace Dominguez and we're talking dinosaurs. This is episode three of five in our series on dinosaurs. So far we've talked about what makes a dinosaur a dinosaur. We've talked about the first time people found dinosaurs ever. And we've even talked about fossil hunting and how that can sometimes not be good for dinosaurs. Today though, we're gonna talk a little bit about the economics of dinosaur hunting. There's always been a public interest in dinosaurs because they live in our imaginations. We've never seen them and they existed so long ago and they're so big that we just all love thinking about how amazing it must have been to be in their midst, right? There have always been, because of that, private fossil collectors. You know, people who funded digs in order to get those fossils, whether they were, you know, gentlemen scientists or people who just genuinely wanted fossils, if you were wealthy enough, you could go out and dig them up. And that seems to be on an upswing now. We're actually getting more and more people privately funding digs. And it's expensive. You know, you have to house the people who are digging. You have to find the spot, which requires research. You have to, you know, give those people food. You have to pay them for their time. And you also have to fund the research to then take the things that you found while digging and turn them into something you could show off. A lot of people believe that the reason it seems to be on an upswing is the movie Jurassic Park. You know, I think people like Nicolas Cage and Harrison Ford are rumored to have cool dinosaur collections. Full disclosure, we work for a company named Discovery. Discovery's world headquarters in Maryland has a T-Rex in the lobby. We bought that. Google has a T-Rex on their campus. They bought that. You know, those are things that people love to have around because they convey all of this meaning just by sitting there next to you, right? And the rights to dig for these things vary from place to place, and they can get a little complicated. In the United States, and most countries, they say you cannot excavate or sell vertebrate fossils from public property without a special permit. You have to go get a permit to dig up a fossil. Unless it's an invertebrate, you know, like a shell on the beach, that's fine. But vertebrate fossils, that's completely different. Permits are usually only granted to accredited institutions, universities and museums for the public good. And they are never granted to unaffiliated individuals, usually. In China and Argentina, however, no fossils at all can be collected without a permit and none of the fossils collected in China or Argentina can leave the country, legally speaking. In the U.S., fossils collected on private land, though, that's not government land, they can be sold by the rightful owner of the land. And that can cause problems for museums because that can drive up the price for fossils. Previously, if you wanted a fossil and say you were, you know, the Museum of Natural History and you wanted a fossil, you would have to fund a paleontologist and their team to go and get a fossil in a place where you probably knew there were fossils around. Now, private companies or private groups, even private citizens can compete with you to go and get that fossil. That drives the price up for the dig, but it also drives the price up if someone else digs it up and now you have to buy it. In 2013, two preserved skeletons that were posed in epic battle were found. They were actually previously unknown species, the Nanotyrannus lysensis, which is a type of pygmy T-Rex, and a Chasmosaurine ceratopsian, which is a relative of the Triceratops. They were marketed by saying things like, teeth from the predator were embedded in the neck and back of the plant eater. The T-Rex's chest and skull were crushed as though the ceratopsian had delivered a kick from the side. That's pretty exciting stuff. And if you can market it that way to your museum goers, you're gonna get more people to come into your museum. And you can also learn about battles, not just from movies, of these real life animals. This was unearthed, however, on private property at a ranch in Hell Creek, Montana, and the law says the property owners get that fossil. They own it. The seller offered to sell it to the Smithsonian and the American Museum of Natural History in New York, but the New York Times reported the museums backed away because the price of the fossil was set between seven and nine million dollars. How did it get that valuation? because people had started to sell them. The first dinosaur fossil auctions went for millions of dollars, so now people knew that it was a commodity and they would fund private ventures to go out and dig them up so they could sell them. 
You can go on eBay right now and you can actually find dinosaur fossils. The problem is most people purchasing those fossils don't really care if their T-Rex tooth came from someone's backyard or from a place in China where it's illegal to export it and sell it. So for example, there's a really crazy story. This guy whose last name I can't entirely pronounce, Procopy, I think, Eric Procopy. In May of 2012, Procopy attempted to auction a Tarbosaurus skeleton, which was discovered in the Gobi Desert. He tried to auction it for $1 million US. He'd been doing this for a while. This wasn't his first rodeo. He was smuggling dino fossils he found in Mongolia back into the US, then he would auction them off and make a bunch of money. The Mongolian president heard about this auction and he filed a complaint with the United States because Mongolia does not allow the export of these fossils. October of 2012, federal agents showed up and arrested Procopy in his Gainesville, Florida home. They seized 400 pounds of fossils from him, obtained pictures of him digging up and removing the dinosaur bones from Mongolia, and of course, since the law in Mongolia prohibits the commercialization of natural history at all, not just like export, but you can't sell fossils. And that's been a law since 1924. Why don't we have that law? That's crazy. In fact, the Mongolian government says if you find a dinosaur fossil anywhere in the country, it belongs to the people of Mongolia. Procopy was arrested. Procopy wrote on his customs claims forms when he was bringing in these illegal fossils, this is a bunch of broken old bones and lizards I'm shipping from the Great Britain, and it's worth $15,000. That's a quote. Of course, some good came out of Procopy's greed. He was facing possibly 17 years in prison, and Eric Procopy stopped defending himself and switched strategies. Instead of saying these dinosaur bones are, you know, whatever, there's broken old bones, he started talking. He started saying, hey, law enforcement, this is how the fossil trade works. Martin Bell, an assistant U.S. attorney, says that there's probably not an active fossil investigation at this point that doesn't owe something on some level to information that Mr. Procopy had furnished to law enforcement. That's pretty cool. He kind of flipped on him. And now over 18 mostly semi-complete and fully complete dinosaur fossils have been returned to Mongolia because of their help. Enough to populate a whole new dinosaur museum in Ulaanbaatar, which is the capital of Mongolia, and it now stands as the central museum of Mongolian dinosaurs. So even though kind of a shady character, Procopy did eventually kind of right his wrongs, I guess. He helped get those dinosaurs back to Mongolia indirectly. The thing is, these dinosaur bones are so appreciated by so many people, and now that they've started selling them, there's an economic benefit to fossils. And that's crazy, because someone paid for the rights to dig on land, and then sued the diggers when the fossil was found, knowing that they would be able to make money in the sale. You can actually listen to that story over on Planet Money, one of my favorite podcasts. They're awesome. This is not a paid promotion. I'm just saying it. I just really like NPR's Planet Money, but they have a whole thing just about the economics of fossils, of specifically dinosaur fossils. Really, really cool. But here's the thing. Regardless of how you feel about private citizens and groups digging up dinosaur fossils, you know, to gain riches and then dig up more fossils and gain more riches, a lot of fossils would go undiscovered. You know, people will say, this is bad, people will say this is good, but in the end, there are more fossils being dug up now, more research opportunities being created because we're digging up so much more information about these species. And in this case, Eric Procopy, even though he's kind of a scumbag, the events of his capture and eventual kind of flip funded an entire museum worth of fossils for the people of Mongolia, so that's kind of cool. Science needs to study these. They need to know more about the dinosaurs because, as you know, dinosaurs are dead. The more fossils we have, the more we can learn about it. The more we can learn about it, the more we know how they died, the more we know what the Earth was like, you know, millions of years ago. And dinosaurs are never, ever coming back. Ever. Ever. We're not going to clone them. Spoiler alert. We're going to talk about why we're not going to do that tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe for more Test Tube Plus and come back and check us out for that, episode four or five on dinosaurs. Also, let us know down in the comments if you could clone a dinosaur and have one as a pet, what dinosaur would you want to clone? Okay? Thanks for watching, everyone. Come find me on Twitter. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. You can find the show at Test Tube. Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.